What is up guys, Politics Gaming here, and today we are doing a brand new dev diary about World Warfare and economics. This is going to be the sixth dev diary that we have covered on this channel. If you guys want to see more like this, hit the... If you guys want to see more content like this, hit that bell notification icon, hit the like button, subscribe if you are new. If you guys want to see more geopolitical gaming content, go ahead and again, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a lot of that, and that is primarily what we discuss on this channel. And I am very much going to be covering World Warfare... And I am very much going to be covering world warfare and economics as the development progresses. I am very close to the developer of this game and I've been following him ever since 2021. Before we get started, let's go ahead and thank today's sponsor, Factor. Factor is a ready-made meal service which allows you to kick fast food to the curb and have meals within minutes. Delivered straight to your door, Factor gives you options whether you're vegan, low calorie, keto, vegetarian, or just want a healthier lifestyle. With 27 meal options a week along with 34 add-on options, Factor Factor gives you the opportunity to live the life you want. Each meal comes in a quick to make package for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with zero time cleaning up. Like me, my lunch breaks at work aren't that long. Factor gives me the time and patience to make a meal in just two minutes or less and spend the rest of the time relaxing after eating a delicious meal packed with protein, veggies, and even desserts if I wanted to. To finally end dependence on fast food, check out Factor today using the link in the description along with the special code to choose a healthier lifestyle today. So in today's dev diary, this is going to be the changing of the UI of the game. So this starts off with greetings, everyone. Welcome back to our ongoing saga, the sixth installment of our cherished dev diary series. This is where we share the magic that happens behind the scenes, offering a glimpse into the monumental strides we've been making in recent memory in our gaming odyssey. Over the last few months, we have been on an epic quest, our mission to unlock the perplexing mysteries that often make strategy games feel like deciphering an alien language or solving a Rubik's Cube blindfold. You see, we understand that complexity can add depth and texture to a game, transforming it from a mere pastime to an intellectual journey. But we also recognize that this complexity can be a double-edged sword. To illuminate the issues, we've invested countless hours of rigorous research and conducted in-depth conversations with our devoted legion of players. It is throughout the synergy of science and dialogue that we have arrived at our profound revelation. The crux of the issue isn't the complexity itself, no, the, it's the Herculean task of managing all of these intricate components in a unison that often overwhelms players. Allow us to illustrate with a graph that we meticulously put together. This visual aid pinpoints precisely when and where players begin to lose their foothold on the thrill of a game. So we scroll down and we see, starts off with, you know, it's thinking, opportunities, emotion, and action. And then so it says that you get the game exploration, research and validation, you choose your country, you interact with the tutorial, you begin to navigate the interface and create military systems. So then you say, this game is everything I need as soon as you start to play it, but then as you start to play it more and more, it says the tutorial is too confusing everything is scattered and then that puts your uh, thoughts of the game downward even more as you say the interface has way too much going on and i don't even know where to start and it's essentially with exactly what the uh, the ui was doing in the previous iteration of world warfare and economics um it was very clunky very very basic and also just too cluttered so what we have now is going to be this so this is the old one that we had before and honestly it just looks it looks ugly it, it looks too ugly and some people even say that it looks more like a mobile game um but then we look over to the right and this is the brand new uh, a UI that we have right now. So this is whenever we're going over and uh, activating a policy. We see the expenditure raise or reduction. We see the effects that it has on our country. Um, and then we have, you know, health, education, welfare, security, transportation, energy. Um, and honestly, especially whenever I would play the game, um, essentially what it would do is that it's extremely hard to know where everything is. That is one of the biggest things that I always have difficulties with in this game is that everything just feels way too clunky. It doesn't feel like that I know exactly where everything is. I have to search for literal minutes to find out where just one tiny little option is. Um, and, and, and it's just, it's just, it's, it's just too ugly, honestly, in my opinion. Um, and this is the old one, the one that I really, really did not like, and this is the brand new one. So what this actually reminds me of is Super Power 3. This is honestly looks like a big 
a mix between World Warfare and Economics and Super Power 3, especially the way that the UI kind of like forms itself. It kind of looks like some of the menus that you would have off of Super Power 3. So we go down, we see these same types of budgets or the stats um, that we have in the game. You know, we have beds per 1,000, health expenditure, doctors, etc. And then we see our healthcare score over here, health expectancy, sick population. We have percentage in total. And then we have manpower in the in the sector. We have life expectancy, uh, faculty per 1,000 pop, um, hospitalization beds, etc. And then so all of this right here is interactable. So we can click these and have more information that we can see off of these types of, uh, of metrics um, just as we were able to see over here. This honestly makes it more like you can look at it and you can recognize it without looking through here and just having to read it. Honestly, this just looks too basic, too mobile gamey essentially. And then over here, we have a lot more formal and a lot more pretty to look at um, from what we can see. And then going back up, we do see in the honeymoon phase, the initial interaction with the game is pure exhilaration. The world is teeming with features to explore, each one a tantalizing taste of the adventure that awaits. But alas, like all honeymoons, this period is fleeting. Gradually, the intoxicating lure starts to wane, and our players find themselves marooned in a bewildering labyrinth of options and certain of how to navigate the game to execute key maneuvers, and grappling to piece together how the different systems intertwine. And there's another critical ingredient missing from this recipe. Despite the myriad features and options, our players reported feeling the lack of immersion. They crave the heady thrill of stepping into the shoes of a world leader, the feeling every pulse and ripple of the world they rule. So how have we risen to these formidable challenges? We have rolled up our sleeves, fueled up on copious amounts of coffee, and embarked on a full-scale transformation of our game systems, and no stone has been left unturned in our pursuit of the ultimate gaming experience. So this right here again is a policy modification before and after so this is what we would see before we would change a policy we see expenditure rise we see all of the effects that it has on our on our uh, systems on our culture and economy and everything like that and then this is the new one so again this looks way better we can see what's positive and what's negative and what's really kind of um, about the same and then same thing right here we see the in progress facilities we see wages and then we see all the stats right here a lot more pretty to look at and a lot more information that we can get just by glancing at it that's especially especially what i really like is that if i can just glance at it and then just be like okay everything's going good we can move on then that is going to be very good for me whenever I'm making content on this game is because all I have to do is click it, look at it, and then move on to the next topic. The only complaint that I have about this screenshot right here is number one, the fonts on the countries. I think that that needs to change. I don't have any idea what it should look like yet, but hopefully that does change in a future update. The other thing that I do have to complain about this is that this honestly kind of looks like I'm looking at something off of an iPad. Um, I don't know if this is essentially already implemented into the game yet. I have access to the brand new version with the graphics update and everything, um, but I don't, this kind of looks more like it's photoshopped into the game um, from this. Uh, maybe this is an actual screenshot. Um, but this honestly looks like I'm like holding an iPad up to my up to my face and then this is exactly the UI that I'm looking at. I think that this should change a little bit. I think that they should maybe refine it um, just a tiny bit more. Um, if they really, really like it, honestly, I'm not going to complain about it. Maybe they can work on it a little bit more. But if if that's beside the point, they've already done so much in this in this big update right here. Um, and I, I, I'm really excited to see where they're, what, where else they're going to be able to go um, with this new update. But honestly, I'm very happy with this. It seems like I'm able to grasp more information just by looking at this. Maybe they can color code financial status. They can maybe make uh, the military status maybe a different color. They can make both of those different colors. That way you can kind of glance at it and then be like, okay, this is what I have. This is what I have. Um, that's my account balance. That's my revenue population, etc. etc. I also like how it says 24.63 billion people is the population uh, right there. So very interesting to see that as a population. 
Um, but I do really like this. We also see that we have a newsreel right here talking about what is going on in the world. Um, moving down, we do see core laws. We have active, active, and then not active. So we can, again, by a glance, we can see which one is active and which one is not active. I'm very sure he's going to be adding a lot more laws in the future. I really, really, really do not think that there should only be four different laws or at least four, five, six, seven laws that we're able to change here. Um, I think that there should be a lot more laws whenever it comes to uh, whenever it comes to um, what we're able to change and what we're able to interact with. Um, but the laws we have right here, this is going to be for transportation. We have active transit, transit hours, uh, ticket fee, ticket tax rates. We have holiday transit ban, encouraging carpooling, free tr school transit, and major highway tolls. And then right over here, we have transit score, transit transit expenditure. And then daily passengers is 64.98% or 28.4 million passengers total. We have average response time is five minutes. And then police cases is 1,146. So that's 1,146 trans transit uh, cases. And then 1,146 fire cases. So I think these is more emergency cases in which they had to respond to something happening, maybe on a train or on a bus or something like that. But that's a very interesting thing to see right here. Um, and then scrolling down, we do see this is from education. This is special education assistance, um, whether we have a uh, special ed uh, disabled or enabled in uh, World Warfare and Economics. And then we have $140 billion whenever we do this. Um, we see the capitalism score, equality score, human rights score, and then the student rate, and then the socialism rate right here. Um, and then scrolling over here, we see education score, ex education expenditure, student population, um, and then teachers per students per teacher, um, which is that's not really uh, shown right here. We see human development index, literacy rate, and then student uh, student seats per 1,000. Um, so it seems like these are kind of basic because it looks like that 1,146 is like the default number that we see on these cases right here. So maybe this isn't completed, but this is essentially wh exactly what we're about to get. Um, and then scrolling down, we do see we have um, what looks like the welfare budget. So this is the welfare budget right here um, of our uh, expenditures as the United States. And then it looks like, you know, we're making or uh, losing $249 billion right here. We have $133 billion uh, manpower expense, fa uh, faculty, uh, facility expenses, laws expenses. So it shows us the manpower, facility, and laws expenses of all of everything that is a part of this sector. And then over here, we have the same kind of metrics from the previous ones. And then again, elderly cases, 1,146. So I definitely think that this is not done yet. And then scrolling down, we do see what it looks like to construct buildings. We have 788 buildings we're about to dismantle. And then that's going to cost us $107 billion. And then that'll be done on uh, the on February 21st, 2028. And then again, the same kinds of metrics over here. I like, really like this, that it shows us a graph of what's going on with manpower. And then all of the uh, types of, uh, ma of uh, menus and everything right here. Um, so we do see, you know, the international lines. We have Australia's uh, states and provinces right here um, and everything. All footage is from the pre-alpha. So that's exactly what I need to tell you guys is that all of this is from pre-alpha. None of this is subject to staying the way it is. So if you guys are going like, this looks terrible, this looks horrible, I don't like this. It is all subject to change. And if you guys want to input your thoughts on what needs to change, go ahead and join the Discord. I'll put that in the description down below. So um, that's really all we have right now. So uh, I think this is also the brand new Okron Studio website. So I'm very excited for that. Um, this is the biggest game that is going to be uh, being released by Okron Studio. Very, very, very excited. And it looks like that the Okron Studio is growing. This only started with the one guy um, which is which he goes by Lotus 21 um, he wanted to make a game which was able to compete against games like power and revolution and he emailed me about two years ago in 2021 about mid 2021 and basically said hey I'm making a game and I would like you to talk to talk to me and uh, give me input on this game and then maybe even 
to promote it on your channel. And I'm very glad that he contacted me because um, he's a very, very good guy. And I'm very happy that he is looking to make this a community game. This is not going to be a game in which, you know, it's like he just has a set amount of stuff that he's going to do. This is where everyone has input. So it's that that way it's not going to be biased to one from one side to another. It's going to look at itself from a community of players from all walks of life from all over the world, whether you're from the east, from the west, from any type of country, then you have the same amount of input that anyone else has and that you can say, I don't like how this is represented in the game. This needs to change. And then that can be submitted to the community and then we can go on from there. So very excited to see where this can go and what we are going to be doing with World Warfare and Economics. So guys, if you guys like this, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you guys want to see more content like this, hit that bell notification icon so you miss anything whenever I do make it. Without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching and take care.